Happy month of May, everyone. Considering that this is the first month of May of this series, I decided to talk about one of the best drivers in Indy 500 history. I figured the topic of this video was a good start because he had a very long and expansive career. In his illustrious career, he became the most successful British driver in IndyCar history, with multiple championships and Indy 500 wins. In this episode of All IndyCar, we talk about Dario Franchitti. Welcome back to All IndyCar, the motorsports history show looking at the most interesting stories in American open wheel racing. Dario Franchitti was born in Bathgate, Scotland on May 19, 1973. He had a pretty normal upbringing in Scotland, but while studying at Stewart's Melville College in Edinburgh, Dario would gain a keen interest in carts. From here to the end of the 80s, Dario won a bunch of races and championships in national kart competitions. By 1991, Dario was ready to make the step up to cars, racing full-time in the Formula Vauxhall Junior Series for David Leslie. For it being his first year in cars, expectations were for him to get his sea legs in the series and maybe grab a few podiums or even a win. What Dario did instead was win the championship in his first year in cars. He would once again win a Formula Vauxhall championship, but this time it was in the main series in 1993. He then moved into F3 machinery for the next year where he did alright but didn't win a title. His career then took a very weird turn as he started racing in DTM for the next few years where he didn't do too bad. However, by the at the end of the 1996 season, the DTM series would fold and Dario was left scrambling for a ride. Thankfully for himself, Mercedes decided that Franchitti was worth keeping and backed a kart campaign for Franchitti the next year. Driving for Hogan Racing, 1997 would be pretty crap for him. Eight DNFs would hamper anyone's year, especially one that only had a single top 10. He finished 22nd in points and third of all rookies behind Patrick Carpentier and Walter Salas. This wasn't all on Franchitti though, as Hogan Racing was pretty awful in their time in the series. In nearly 74 races, the team had only 5 top 5s. Before the end of the 97 season, Franchitti had already left the team for the greener pastures of Team Green. The start of 98 would be far better, as instead of a best finish of 9th, Franchitti had already gone a podium at Long Beach. That put him 4th in the championship, but problems began to arise 3 weeks later at Nazareth. This began a three-race stretch of retirements, dropping him down to eighth in the championship. This wouldn't be the last of the DNFs either, as over the next six races, he traded top fives with retirements. After a seventh DNF of the year at Mid-Ohio, he finally broke through. Wins at Road America, Vancouver, and Houston, along with good finishes at Laguna Seca and Surfer's Paradise, brought Frank Heidi as high as second in the points entering the last race of the season. However, an engine failure at Fontana left Frank Heidi third in the points. 1999 would be even better as Franchitti spent the whole year in a great title battle with Juan Pablo Montoya that probably deserves its own video. Franchitti and Montoya would eventually tie on points, but because he had more wins, Montoya would be crowned the champion under a dampened celebration after the death of Greg Moore. 2000 would start off pretty terrible with a testing crash that fractured Franchitti's pelvis. The IndyCar season itself was filled with struggles as after nearly winning the title, Franchitti was winless and finished 13th in the standings. Dario couldn't replicate his near championship season from 1999, as through his final two seasons in kart, he only won another four races. Before 2003, Team Green would leave kart, join the IRL, and become Andretti Green Racing. Franchitti was excited to start a new chapter of his career, but a back injury derailed his season before it even started. He'd get back in the cockpit in 2004 and have an okay year, getting two wins at Milwaukee and Pikes Peak. The same could also be said about the next two seasons, but 2007 would be much different. Entering the 91st Indy 500, Dario was coming off the back of a second place run at Kansas and was sitting a solid fourth in the standings. The Indy 500 was looking like yet another great race for him, leading 20 laps before Marty Roth would bring out the caution. Dario took the lead before the restart and held it as the rain came down. When the yellow and checkers came out, cutting the race short, Dario Franchitti would win the 91st running of the Indy 500. He joined his childhood hero Jim Clark in Elite Company as the only two Scotsmen to ever win the race in its long history. After taking home the sport's biggest prize, Dario went and got another big trophy, winning the 2007 season championship. Instead of going for a back-to-back -back championship, however, Dario went to NASCAR for 2008. 
For the sake of myself editing and recording this, we're only going to summarize Dario's 2008 stock car escapades as not being up to scratch. In 2009, with a deal signed over 8 hours, most of which were spent arguing over signing a napkin, Dario would come back to IndyCar for target Chip Ganassi. He came back and it looked like he didn't even miss a beat, winning his second race back at Long Beach. He would grab another 4 wins throughout the rest of the year at Iowa, Toronto, Sonoma, and Homestead on his way to a second IndyCar championship. In 2010, Dario grabbed another 3 wins, including a second Indy 500 win that May. With that, he won a third championship. Championship. 2011 would be another great year, with Dario getting a fourth championship. However, the way this great season came to an end was awful, with the tragedy in Las Vegas taking one of Dario's closest friends, that being Dan Weldon. This would also be the last year of the venerable IRO5 chassis. The new DW12 chassis was a complete pivot from the car everyone was used to, and with that switch, Dario would never be the same. To anyone else, Dario's 2012 season stats would be a great year, winning his third Indy 500, finishing 7th in the points, and having other good finishes. However, these results weren't too good for a three-time reigning champion. Compared to 2013, however, 2012 was fantastic. For the first time since 2006, Dario went winless, getting a best finish of third. That was bad enough, but in Houston later that year, things would get far, far worse. Marbles on the outside there, Sato oh, gets he got loose. loose. Oh! oh no! Oh my goodness. That is a horrifying ride for Dario Franchitti. Oh man, that is an oval crash we've seen before. Dario had been injured multiple times over the years, but this was really the straw that broke the camel's back. No pun intended. Roughly a month after the accident, Franchitti announced his retirement from racing. Nowadays, Dario is a play-by-play -play commentator for Formula E, a competition director for Chip Ganassi, and he sits as one of the best drivers in IndyCar history. He's tied for third on the list of champions, tenth on the all-time wins list, and his three Indy 500 wins makes him one of the best drivers in the Speedway's history. With all that being said, I think it's understandable as to why I think Dario is one of the greatest IndyCar drivers of all time, and I hope with this video, you've gained some more respect for his career and life.